Okay, so we've covered things like regiochemistry of enolate formation. Now I want to look at stereochemistry, and this is something we never even considered in the basic organic class. But you can, in many cases, get either an E or a Z enolate, or if you're British, you would call that a Z enolate. And this is covered in the book on page 246 to 248. We start with a simple uh, acyclic ketone like this. We'll assume that this isn't going to be forming enolates over this side. You can either get an E enolate or a Z enolate. And in fact, you often get a mixture of these things with most metals, uh, that's what you would see. And with lithium, that's true as well. If you have a bulky R group here, that tends to favor the formation of uh, the Z enolate. The Z enolate in this case is the one where the R group is trans to the, um, the other end. And so imagine if this gets bigger and bigger, uh, this will want to be away from it more and more. So that makes sense. If you have a smaller R group, you can get quite a lot of the E enolate. And also, you can promote the, uh, the formation of the Z enolate using a polar solvent like HMPA. That tends to cause it as well. Okay, so more on the uh, E versus Z enolate chemistry. Um, the lithium enolates often give mixtures when they react, uh, so that limits their viability. They can be used sometimes, but um, boron enolates are becoming uh, more popular, um, or have become more popular, uh, for doing stereoselective reactions. And although we were covering the reactions in starting in the next section, uh, obviously, the formation of these boron enolates is worth talking about. So, now remember.
remember, boron, it's actually not that common an element in the Earth's crust, but it is fairly cheap. And it's the uh, metalloid, or non-metal sometimes it's considered, it's really more like a metalloid. It's just to the left of carbon in the periodic table. So as a second row element, it, it forms uh, fairly small bonds. It's being a metalloid, it's mainly forming a, a covalent bond with things like oxygen. Even though it's a polarized bond, and the um, Lewis acidity of the boron will also affect that bond, uh, the vacant um, p orbital that you have. Nevertheless, it's, uh, it's covalently bonded. Uh, the lithium, although it's, it's going to be a very tight ion pair, has some ionic character to it. So the, the boron has a nice short uh, boron oxygen bond and it's covalently bound. That makes it very good uh, for doing reactions with because what, uh, your transition states are going to be very clearly defined. So. So, um, we can, uh, and actually we'll see this in 3.5, which is coming up in the next section, and also that, that's the uh, alkylation, and also when we cover the uh, stereoselective aldol reaction, we'll also uh, use boron elates quite a lot. Um, we can use conditions that favor either formation of an E boron enolate or a Z boron enolate. make it from something like a dialkyl uh, boron halide plus a tertiary amine like triethylamine. So for example for this that we used before with the lithium if we use if we use a dicyclohexyl uh, boron, uh, chloroborane, uh, that will uh, give us the E enolate. But if we use a smaller R group on the boron, or at least a less crowded one, and use a triflate and a more hindered base, now we can get the Z enolate formed in good year. And, and this is quite selective. I think the selectivity is over 90% for both these reactions. Okay, so next I'll summarize a little bit more on how to use, uh, how to do this more generally, because we will want to use boron enolates a lot in the coming sections on reactions. Okay, so let's summarize what you need for formation of an E enolate or a Z enolate with boron. If you want to make the E enolate, you want to have a bulky group 
on the boron So a cyclohexyl group, that's what CY stands for. Cyclohexyl is a good one. It's easy, cheap to make. Uh, you just make it from cyclohexene and a borane, and that will do the job. For a Z enolate, where you have these groups are gonna be uh, hitting their heads against each other, you want something a bit smaller on the boron, and as long as it's not too crowded, that's what uh, we're looking for. So a, a, a butyl group is commonly used. Now, we also need a leaving group on boron. That's a halogen or a triflate. And if you remember your hard soft acid base theory, concept. Uh, the halogens, particularly iodine, is considered a soft leaving group, whereas triflate is considered a hard leaving group. And this helps as well. Uh, in fact, uh, the iodine is often used with the cyclohexyl for that reason. But um, Chlorine works quite well anyway. Um, the main one used for the hard ones is the triflate. And lastly, the base you use also affects it. So we want to use a less hindered base, triethylamine. It, it is fairly hindered, but uh, it's not as hindered as this one. And although the, the difference between this space and this space is only a couple of carbons, that actually makes quite a big difference to how hindered uh, the bases are. Also use something like pentamethyl, but this uh, diisopropyl ethylamine. Sorry, it's probably uh, systematically called ethyl diisopropyl amine. Uh, that one is uh, actually cheaply available. It can be made by reductive amination of acetone twice. And so you can buy it in large quantities fairly cheaply. And it's known as Hunig's base. whether there's an umlaut on here or not, but um, at least you know what it's called. <laughs> <laughs>